deep learning supersampling, or DLSS, to keep things simple. This is one of the most exciting aspects of the RTX lineup, in my opinion. More exciting than ray tracing, yes. I guess I should explain a little bit what DLSS is if I'm going to be going on about it. It's pretty much as the name implies. Deep Learning Neural Network Enhanced Super Sampling <laughs> that increases the performance at a given resolution to a really impressive magnitude. The quick and simple way that it works is that a developer shares the game code with NVIDIA who then uses their supercomputer networks to analyze the game's imagery at essentially 64x MSAA and trains the AI or tensor cores to be able to reconstruct a lower resolution image to the quality that they're able to infer. Now all of this is done on the fly and utilizes the tensor cores found within the RTX 20 series when paired with downloaded little small files from each update to GeForce Experience or the driver stack for the games that it supports. So realistically the way that it works is there's no way to roll back support to something like Pascal or Maxwell on this one. One of the reasons that this excites me more than ray tracing is the ease of adoption by developers since NVIDIA is doing this at no charge to help bolster the adoption rate. Seeing the list of supported games not only grow, but being put into existing games is a rather promising sign. But what about performance? Because that's one of the things we want to talk about. We wanted to take a dig at the performance aspect of DLSS from a frame rates to power draw as well as temperatures. I mean, it only makes sense to check power draw and temperature since it's activating additional cores on the GPU to see how it impacts the card. So to do so, we were restricted to the Infiltrator demo since it's all we really have available at the time to work with. Performance wise, we can see quite the difference between the three variants on screen. The left is showing the demo running at 4K with TAA on a GTX 1080 Founders Edition. The middle, however, is running on the RTX 2080 Founders Edition, but still with TAA enabled. And finally, over on the far right, you're seeing the RTX 2080 Founders Edition running with DLSS enabled, and it's quite the bump. Now, something to take a note is what you're seeing on screen was actually recorded with NVIDIA Share at 4K, so... It is taking a bit of a performance hit, but we did take measurements. So we took the performance metrics from the entire run and seeing just how much impact it had on the low end frame rates and not just the averages show the real benefit. So it definitely takes an uptick on the bottom end and that's very much welcome. Checking power draw figures during the demo show a small but measurable power increase, but it's smaller than expected if I'm quite honest. Moving on to thermal testing again shows a small but measurable increase. Now something I'm curious about is when the RT cores get loaded in addition to all the others. I mean so far we're not even able to fully load down the full GPU and that's going to be fun to see later on. Well there you have it folks, the future of DLSS looks pretty exciting and this is only getting started. Now sorry if you came here looking for a full review. We do have that link down in the description below if you want to go over there and dig through the 20 pages of it. But here we're going to dive into it one topic at a time. So far, DLSS. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this implementation of the RTX package. And this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. We'd love for you to subscribe and hit the bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.